Thanks for joining me, I'm Benny Knott from Noisy Post. Today we're gonna to do some audio editing using the Fairlight desktop console and Resolve. There's some user function buttons on the console that are gonna help us edit quickly, but I've got my own little tip. Let's get into it. So we have audio on our timeline now within Fairlight. Now, if we wanna see our function buttons, we wanna press the zoom button and press one, two, three, four, five, or six, whatever, and that will bring up our user functions on the little window. Now, if we wanna see all the different functions, we can go up a tier by holding Alt, and then you can see there's a blank one, basic level, nudge, so if we go to level, it's got uh, like clip level, which is clip gain, we can fade it playhead. So if we go to basic here, we can move around our audio. One thing to note though, if you haven't selected your track, then the audio clip isn't selected. So this follows the playhead. So I'll show you here. So if we split this audio, now you can see that this audio is selected here. If we go back, now that audio is selected here, but it only works if you have that track selected. So if we select all the tracks, it will then actually select the audio for all those three or four tracks that you've selected, whatever's under the playhead. So it's a good way to like zoom around and uh, go through your window. So one thing you might want to do is, all right, so we're gonna split this clip into two places. We're gonna go, all right, we're gonna split it here. And then we would go back to our level. So we're gonna press uh, Alt, what was that, three. And now we can go over this clip and we press one and hold it down and we can just zoom it up. So there we go, we've added some clip gain. Now, one thing that isn't already in the function, it says if you hold uh, shift here, there's a head X point. So I'm assuming that that is to do with the crossfade. I've yet to work out how that works. What I've added as functionality is if you add in and out points, so that's just using your IO. So we're gonna go in and out, Option. excuse me for pressing that. We press in and out, and what I've added is the X button does a crossfade. So you'll see there, we've now added a crossfade. If you press G, that gets rid of your in and out points. So let me show you that again. So we're gonna go in, we'll go out point here, and then we're gonna press X, which adds a crossfade. And we can press G to get rid of our selection. Now, what I've done there is, so if you go and just search for your keyboard customization, here I've just searched for crossfade, and then see in that crossfade selection, I've just added X as the crossfade button. Now, already um, in and out points and the clear in and out points with the G is already in um, Da Vinci. So one thing that I was gonna suggest, so we have now given ourselves a clip gained section a bit louder, we've put in some crossfades. It's not that quick, you know, you've got other functions that we can do here. So like, let's just say we, all right, so let's go, uh, let's go back to basic and we want to um, split that clip. Oh, remember we gotta be selected. So we wanna split that clip and let's just say we'll trim the playhead to there, right? And we wanna go across here and we wanna add a fade. So you just need to go back to your number three and then we can go add a fade in there. So there's a few things like that that are a bit tricky. One thing to note is we can nudge our clips. So if we go into number four, which is nudge, we can nudge our audio back and forward. One good trick though within the basic tab is there is if we hold control and press the slip clip, so we could you know find the start of our transient, uh, it could be a sound effect, and we hold control and go, then it adds a second option, which is the slip clip. We can go, all right, this is the point in our frame where the sound effect happens, we let it go, boom, it's right there. So you can see there's some functionality there when it comes to editing, and there is gonna be future updates where you can add your own buttons and order them how you want, which will be fantastic. But what I'd recommend, as you can see here, I've got a stream deck, and I haven't set it up yet, but I will, and I will share my layout, but I'm going to set up custom buttons within uh, DaVinci Resolve Fairlight that has things like the in and out points, the clear, the crossfades and everything all on this stream deck so that using the jog wheel and going through and editing, but using the stream deck for my buttons, which basically is what the audio editor is. It's a giant QWERTY keyboard with OLED buttons. So if you buy the desktop audio editor, you will have a giant stream deck that you can zip around and edit your audio. But at this stage, I wouldn't say this console is any quicker than a mouse and keyboard 
But I think once the Stream Deck set up as well, I do love the idea of being able to zip around with the jog wheel and be able to press some of the buttons to do crossfades or some quick clip gain. Because at this stage, the amount of double pressing and the banking feels a bit sluggish to me. So really, this is more of a mixer than an editor. But that's why they've got both. If you're more of an editor, then you get the audio editor. If you're more of a mixer, you get this desktop console. But I would suggest these days a lot of people do a bit of both. So you can actually have both working at the same time or get their larger console, which has both. But if money is an issue, I would say get yourself one of these, get yourself a Stream Deck, uh, even get yourself Soundflow. So Soundflow is a great application that you actually is great for Pro Tools, but you can set up all your own buttons and you can also set up macros. And so really you can even use an iPad. So you could have an iPad with a crap ton of buttons on there and have it all set up. The thing I love about this is the tactileness. They're like, well, it's just feeling the buttons underneath and the clicking. And you can obviously manipulate these to change depending on what you're doing within Fairlight. And, and you know, you have folders and things like that. So you could have an editing folder, uh, you could have a mixing folder. And basically what you get functionality wise from this user button, you can have it right here and you can actually see it. You know, you'll be able to see what buttons you've got. You can, you know, you make your own icons as well. And so in the future, I will do that. I'm going to set up uh, a few macros and buttons to help you with the editing uh, with or without this, because let's be honest, you could do some of this stuff with the scroll wheel and the mouse. Um, because really the playhead, the one thing I do love about this is having the jog wheel. So, you know, when you're playing through, it will select the audio as you're playing through, or you can, you know, rush around. I love the idea of being able to like, you know, scroll around and just find the points and we'd just be able to go split and we can go through a bit of clip gain, put some fades, and it will be a lot quicker when you've just got something like the Stream Deck set up. I feel like I've rambled enough and I'm probably, I could just keep going, but I really do think this has got a, a long way to go when it comes to editing, but I don't know that it'll ever be a great editor anyway. Like the jog wheel feels fantastic and the buttons on here feel great, but I think you need a combination with say a Stream Deck or even better, the combination of the audio editor. So I am hoping to get my hands on one sometime in the future, but let's really get our hands around this console first before we do that. Thanks for joining me today. If you have any other questions, write them in the comment. I'd love to be able to give you more information on this controller and this console before you decide whether you want to purchase. Now, as I'm going through and even making these videos and using the gear, I am finding little things that uh, I feel should be upgraded in the software or in the console. And I'll keep reporting back to Blackmagic as much as I can and hopefully we can get these things ironed out. But I'd love to hear from you guys on your thoughts on what you see in the video. But if you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments and I will uh, make some videos based off your, uh, based off your questions. But uh, thank you so much for joining me and make sure you like and subscribe to see future videos, whether it's to do with the Blackmagic Resolve Fairlight setup or even Pro Tools uh, or even just general audio post-production. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. We'll see you soon.